Welcome to the five at five. And I'm not used to doing five at fives after losing matches this season. So this is a tough one. But anyway, I've had plenty of experience over the years as an Arsenal fan dealing with this sort of thing. Let's get into it. And if you haven't already, please do hit the like video because your team is still top of the league. And that's what we do on this channel. And hit subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. Number one, second defeat of the season. Let me say that again. Only our second defeat of the season. 20 games played and we've only lost two. Come on. You have to keep a bit of perspective about this defeat. And look at that wider context. We've been really, really good. And this is a tough, tough league. And now this is a team in Everton who have got a new manager and are fighting for their lives already. So it was never going to be an easy game. And you have to give Arsenal a bit of credit for how well they've done this season and understand that, yeah, you're not going to have it all your own way all the time. So I don't think we have to worry too much. We don't have to get too critical. We don't have to scapegoat players. And we all saw the Jorginho complaints from a lot of people on Twitter, etc. But I'm not going to partake in that. It's the first time we've lost in exactly five months where we lost our first game of the season also away from home. We've then had a 14-game unbeaten run. Look, if we go and do that again after this result, that would take us to 34 games played in the Premier League with only two defeats. I will take that. If we're losing this infrequently in the Premier League, that is, for me, enough to be champions. So we're going to have to take this one on the chin and accept it for what it is and not get on the backs of our players. Even Mikel Arteta, when he was interviewing with the media after the game, spoke about showing the team love. Hopefully, they feel that love and come back and respond with a big, big performance. Number two, and it is all about that bounce back ability. Yes, horrible defeat against Everton, probably our worst performance of the season, really, really poor, not good enough in terms of the, the duels, our pressing, our defending, Definitely not good enough going forward. Some good chances that we just didn't do well enough on. And Ketia, Erdegaard, just, yeah, not a good day at the office. But it's all about how you respond. And now our next two games can either bring calm or they can bring on chaos. First up, Brentford and then Man City. Two home games in quick succession that will either really cause that chaos or actually we'll all look back and say, Do you know what? Everton was just a blip and it's all good. First up, with Brentford, they've just come off a really good resounding win against Southampton, 3-0. They're seventh in the league. They're doing really, really well. So they'll be confident and it won't be easy. And then it's the massive game against Man City, where we absolutely cannot afford to lose. Me personally, out of those next two games, if we beat Brentford and draw against City, I would take that. We just cannot lose against City in either of the two games that we play against them, but especially our home game. Let me know what you would be happy with as a return from those two games. And fingers crossed, it's not chaos that ensues. It's that sense of calm. And we all start to believe again that Arsenal are going to go on and win the title. Number three, the transfer window. This is the first five at five since the transfer window was completed. And the business that Arsenal has done can be seen in very two different ways. Either you can say, look, we've got what is an unknown in uh, Kiwio that hopefully will come up and do brilliantly, just like our other defenders have done that we've signed, like Tommy Yasu, for example, again from Syria. Not many people had really heard of him. He wasn't on many people's radar, but now he's solid. We all appreciate what he does in the team. If Kiwio follows the same, same sort of route, we'll all be happy. Then there's Trossard, who is Premier League proven, has done really, really well and has been a star at Brighton for, for many, many years now. And then Jorginho. He's won trophies at the highest level and, again, very Premier League proven and adequate cover if Partey or Xhaka need um, some time out of the starting lineup. That's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is that Kirio, who's ever heard of him? When you look at his stats and how he ranks for certain important metrics in Serie A, it's not very impressive yet to be sort of, it's an unknown how well he's going to perform. Trossard, we only got him because we missed out on our first choice target, Mudrik. Jorginho, we only got him because we missed out on our first choice target, which was Moses Caicedo. 
So where do you stand on this transfer window? Is it the former where it's actually some good business or is it the latter where it's sort of, I don't know, panic buying at worst because we haven't got our first choice target? And how would you rate Arsenal's transfer window out of 10? I personally would give it a 6 out of 10. Yes, we didn't get our first choice targets, but we've responded with what I think is some solid, sensible business. And I think Trossard and Jorginho will prove their worth and they'll be fine. They're not going to be setting the league alight. They're not going to be on fire, but they'll be good, solid additions to what is a squad game. And especially next season as well, when hopefully we have Champions League and firing on all fronts and going into all four competitions, we'll need that big squad. Number four, more pay the Muppet. I feel like I should have got tie in on this segment because, man, no one hates Neil Morpay more than Ty does. But we all remember why that is. What Neil Morpay did to Bernd Leno injured his knee. And that's what gave Emi Martinez a career, for God's sake. So maybe Martinez likes Neil Morpay, but I certainly don't. And I don't think many other Arsenal fans do. On this occasion, he was up against Arsenal yet again doing his stupidness. And this time it was Zinchenko that took exception where Zinchenko was pointing in his face and having a go at Morpay for being a Muppet again. I don't know what it is about Neil Morpay when he comes up against Arsenal that makes him act like such a Muppet, but clearly he does what he does and he gets under our skin. Next time we play against him, I want to see one of our defenders or a midfielder make a marker for him, hit him hard, hit him early and get some revenge against this absolute clown. Who else is there? other than Neil Morpé, that you just absolutely hate coming up against because every time we do, they're doing something stupid and trying to get under our skin. Put it in the comments below. Number five, Tottenham played Man City recently and didn't do us a favour. And I didn't really know what the hell I wanted in that game. But now, you'll be watching this most likely after Tottenham and Man City have played their Premier League game and you'll know the result. What we need is undeniable now after our slip up against Everton is a massive, massive favour from Tottenham. I know it feels wrong. Let me know what you want to see in the comments below. But as far as I'm concerned, the last thing I want to see is Man City winning and getting three points. If they fail to capitalise on Arsenal slipping up, that will be a big boost for Arsenal in this title run-in. And if that means Tottenham get a win, maybe that's what we need to hope for. I'll take a draw, don't get me wrong, I'd be happy with a boring nil-nil draw, no one scoring any goals, no joy for anyone, some red cards, give me all of that and I'll be happy. But if one team has to win, I think I have to go for Tottenham. I can't believe I'm saying that, yes it feels wrong, but you know what, Man City as well, they're without Foden today because of illness, and crazy that they're without De Bruyne, who Pep Guardiola dropped for tactical reasons. Now will that backfire on Pep Guardiola? Hopefully he, it will, and Tottenham gets something from the game, who are also without Antonio Conte. There's a lot of stuff going on in this game, but Arsenal need Man City to slip up. And especially ahead of that game where we play them, the last thing we want is Man City in touching distance of Arsenal if they beat us in that game. We need to make sure we've got that breathing space, which I think will help Arsenal in our approach to that game and it not being too much of a nervy affair. Let me know what you want to see or what you wanted to see if you're watching it after the culmination of the game in that game between Tottenham and Man City. And like me, can you admit that actually I kind of want to see Tottenham win this game? On that note, I need to stop talking about it. Thank you for watching the 5 at 5. If you haven't already, subscribe, hit the like, all of that stuff. Hopefully Arsenal, after the two big games against Brentford and Man City, are in a really, really commanding position in the Premier League. But no matter what happens, it's going to be a massive week. So get locked in, ready for what's going to be a big ride. Come on, Arsenal.